as we move on to our next presenter. This is a uh, gentleman from the United States, from Colorado, just about in our backyard, who has done a lot of work in the last few years with filmmaking and with leading seminars and workshops. He has his film here. Uh, it's called Leap. So we've asked uh, our friend and colleague, Ike Allen, to come and talk about his work with Leap, the film. Ike, come on up. you with paper today. <laughs> We're going to skip over the film end of things and go back to the world of paper. Now, I love this trademark up here, Inspire Consciousness, because it's just so powerful. I've been watching since I got here. I have nothing planned right now. I live most of my life from inspiration. Most of the films we make, we do from inspiration. Pretty much everything in my life, the people I hang out with, the things I do, the moments I go to the bathroom. It all comes from inspiration. Sometimes it's the body inspiring me, sometimes it's my mind manipulating me, and sometimes, most of the time, if I'm lucky, it's spirit. So, one thing I learned in my life along the way, especially during making Leap, is that this exists. Right here. Right? If you've ever been in the hospital... You may have seen this. <laughs> now, when this happens, <laughs> life's not so good, right? <laughs> what you're really going for is more of this model. <laughs> now, your mind sometimes says, I don't like this model. I want my life to be more like this. <laughs> right? This is so, I just, I don't want highs and lows in my relationship. I don't want highs and lows in my job. I don't want highs and lows in my health. I don't want highs and lows in my spiritual journey or my consciousness journey. But the reality is, this is what we want. Now, you might make it a little bit more balanced, but this is where the fun is to be had. <laughs> right? Some people pay big money to go to places where things go like this. And round and round and up and down, and we pay money, and we get on the roller coaster, or we get on the Ferris wheel, we do all these fun rides. But if you end up here, the more your life gets like this, something you might notice is that it just gets boring. Life gets boring when everything gets the same. When you've been at the same job for 20 years, unless you love it, life gets boring. When you're not taking your lover out to dance and dinner or whatever, life starts to get boring. So, now an interesting thing that happens, this was in my own life, and you may all see this. If you go to the hospital and your life starts to look like this, <laughs> Maybe. Do they come up and stroke you on the shoulder and say, Hey, baby, wake up. Hey, baby, wake up. Oh, Wendy, wake up. Do they do that? Usually what happens in most hospitals is these paddles come at you. And it doesn't say love and joy on it. The intention is love and joy, right? Like they're not coming at you going... I'm really going to screw with Wendy right now. They're going, I love you, Wendy, and because I love you, BAM! <laughs> and then Wendy ends up back in this world. <laughs> now, an interesting thing about often if you experience something like this is when you come back to this world, you kind of appreciate it more. Right? You might appreciate everything in your life more. This could be called one form of waking up. <laughs> How many people know someone or have directly experienced a bad divorce, a loss of someone they love, a heart attack, some major kind of physical challenge? Often in life, when we experience adversity, challenges, we get present to what's important to us. And that's what happened for me. I went bankrupt. Uh, my marriage crumbled, my corporate job, I used to be a restaurant trainer. And all of this, I use the term creator, I create it, just so you know, but I'm also talking about this. 
I, the creator in me, 100% responsible for everything that happens to me in my life. I created divorce, bankruptcy, two young girls to contend with, a baby that was one month old, corporate gold card gone, yada, 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 everything gone. My whole identity slipped away. So who was I? Bam. Again, remember, I didn't rehearse this, so if it sucks, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but I do travel and I do workshops, and one thing we talk about this, this is trademarked as far as you all know, so don't let Jeff Hoppy steal it. We call this the triangle of life, and we say everything exists on a triangle. So let's call this, just to be silly, spirit. <coughs> And let's call this mind, and we always put this off to the left. And let's call this body. In my life, I can't remember who I was talking to yesterday, but there were, oh, it was, it was uh, Linda last night. I had a beer and one beer, and I'm kind of crazy. So, Linda was saying that she really developed her intellect. Now, how many people primarily operate from their mind? And this is your identity, and this is where you say, oh, I'm like Alan, I'm the father of two young girls, and I'm a filmmaker, and I'm a seminar leader, and I have a job, and I have responsibilities, and I have this, and I have that, and I love to garden, and I love the color purple, and I'm a chambra, and I'm a pony, and you just keep coming away. <laughs> this is where I live. This is my primary identity. And what I learned through that experience of getting my ass handed to me, that's a U.S. term, getting my ass handed to me, was that I really was this. And I went down this cosmic journey where I realized it wasn't about the intellect understanding it. Because I've read every book. I've interviewed about 140 top spiritual leaders, from you know the people in Leap to people from The Secret, to all those movies. I'm friends with a lot of those people. I've had access to them. But in the end... You have to discover your own path, and you have to have a direct experience of it. Until you have a direct experience, this is the thing that's really doing all the work. This is figuring it all out. So then I had a direct experience of being this. And then I came back. So now I know I'm this. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, I'm this. And you can call it the zero-point field. You can call it God. You can call it the universe. You can call it whatever you want. Now this is my primary identity, and I pretend to be these two things. I pretend to be like Alan, I'm a father, I'm this, I'm that. But it's no longer an intellectual conversation. I'm God. I literally am God. It's not happening in my mind. Because of my experience of the paddles, I got that I was God. And now that I'm back, I'm two years later into this, the interesting thing that shows up is I'm actually learning to assimilate for the first time ever Imagine you're a spiritual being. Imagine you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're a spiritual being. Like, it's not an intellectual thing. Get out of your head. In non-duality, we talk about headless, cutting yourself <laughs> off from the neck and not operating from the neck. Now, it does come in handy, but, you know, in the beginning, you may want to chop your head off for a while. <laughs> so now I'm two years into assimilating these three personalities. And one thing, whoever I was talking with this morning... The body is not a vehicle in my model. Now, this is just a model. In my model, the body is not a vehicle. The body is a conscious, sentient being that this planet has kept asleep for a long, long, long time. This thing is alive. This thing has its own personality. It's not a car that tells you when it needs gas. It's talking to you. We say, oh, my body wants to eat. My body wants to have sex. My body wants to do this. My body wants to sleep. It's not just a vehicle, it's conscious. So now I'm learning how to incorporate these three things. So what we say in our model is that you have to learn. First of all, you have to figure out how to get back here as your primary identity, which means you have to move beyond the mind. Once you do that, how do you incorporate all three of these things in there simultaneously? And that's where the real fun begins. Now, if anyone's seen Leap and they remember the very beginning of it, the first thing that I say in Lee is that this is designed to be experienced, not understood. Leap is not designed to understand it. We get emails all the time. Now, a lot of people understand it. But we get emails from people all the time that say, that was all choppy, and there was all these random things, and it didn't make any sense to me. 
And then I email back those people and I say, thank goodness you got it. <laughs> you actually got it. Because the movie is not designed to be understood. The movie has so many layers to it. It has all kinds of visual effects going on in there that if you go back and watch it again and again, there's all kinds of things morphing within the movie. People aren't saying what you think they're actually saying. Especially Jeff, now that he's in the final version. <laughs> it's designed to be experienced. And in life, it's in the experiences, the real challenges in life, where we can make a serious change. So now, I didn't go to school to become a filmmaker. I went into the restaurant business. I spent 22 years in the restaurant business. And I'm really good at it. I could convince you to eat that 2,000 calorie, translate that for me, anyone, piece of chocolate cake that you don't need. And I train hundreds and thousands of people in the restaurant business to convince people to buy food that they didn't need, to buy drinks that they didn't need, to take cake home to family members that they didn't need. I'm really good at it. Maybe. No, he's stuck, okay? <laughs> but, you no. Know, but I'm not going to give Wendy the little piece of chocolate cake. I'm going to give her the big piece of chocolate cake. Because more is better. <laughs> it was really interesting. Most of the people I've interviewed at this point, the insane thing is there's nothing wrong with having nice things. And yet what I found with most of these people that were truly peaceful, Dan Millman, who's in the movie, who wrote Way of the Peaceful Warrior, he drives a Prius. Now, he's not doing too bad. Dan Millman could drive a whatever, a BMW, a yada, 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 he drives a Prius. It doesn't really matter what you do, but it was interesting that most people, their lives got simpler and simpler. <laughs> Nothing wrong with whatever you have, but it was an interesting experience. So then I got fired from my corporate job, and I thought, well, I guess I should go get another corporate job, or I guess I should do this, or how am I going to take care of my family, or how am I going to take care of this, or how am I going to take care of that? And this thing was going crazy. It was spinning around and around, and what corporate you know, holding company do I go to next, and yada, 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 yada. And then this thing started talking to me. And it started going, Mike, you don't want another corporate job. And I said, oh, but I do. I do because I like that gold card and there were 41 restaurants I could walk into and do what I want and have what I want and get on planes and travel around and I'll never get to do that again if I don't go get another corporate job because this is what I know in the restaurant business. And then Divinity Spirit, the Zero Point Feel, the Great Blue Smurf kept saying to me, Ike, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is something that would seem so insane to you. You could make a movie that takes a look at if the world is an illusion. And that's how Leap started. Is the world an illusion? And I thought that is the most insane idea in the world, to really consider that this world is not real. I would read a million books about it, but to really go into it. We have many, many friends, no disrespect if you're listening, that have gone to film school. And we call them filmers, not filmmakers. Do you know the difference between a filmmaker and a filmer? A filmmaker actually makes a film. <laughs> and filmers put all the footage in a can or on tapes or whatever. They talk about what they're going to do, or they start, but they never finish anything. And now that's something that I noticed in listening this, the few days that I've been here. Jeff talks about it. I've heard several people talk about it. It's great to be in these seminars, and Lord knows we love it. You know, it's great to be in community. But eventually... You need to get out and live your life. You need to get out and do what you really want to do. In the United States, we did a Harris poll. 77% of all Americans don't like their jobs. So you can imagine what that really means. If 77% of Americans, I don't know how you're doing in your country, wherever you're from, 77% of Americans don't like their jobs. So I'd say 80% hate their jobs. I'm just going to go crazy and throw that out there. And we say that who you are in one area of your life is who you are in most areas of your life. So if you don't like your job, there's probably a lot of those people that don't like their romantic relationships, or don't like their relationships with their friends, or don't like their relationships with their health, or don't like their relationships with their family. <laughs> right? So it's great to talk about it. It's great to talk about what you want to do. And the other thing is, it's great to start what you want to do. 
Most people start things and never finish them. There's probably at least, there's what, 300 of you or so? There's got to be at least 30, 40, 50 people here that are writing a book. And my question to you is, how long have you written and been writing that book? And when are you going to finish it? Because there are 38,000 recognized, established versions, versions, models of Christianity in the world today. 38,000 recognized. And then there's ones that, like these two started, that, you know, they're just at the bus station or whatever. 38,000 recognized versions of Christianity. So what model is right for you? You may find your path to enlightenment, to operating from here, is writing that book. You may be looking, you may be seeking and pursuing a path through this organization, which is phenomenal. I love these guys. You may be going through Buddhism. You may be going through gardening. But the real question is, is it serving you, whatever model you're going? And is the model that's actually going to work for you staring you in the face I keep making faces at Wendy Kennedy, if anybody's listening online, because she's pretty darn cute. <laughs> and I have a girlfriend, and that means nothing, Ashley. Um, is it serving you? Is it actually serving you? Because your path may be the book. Your path may be cleaning things up with your family. As we pursue seeking over here, you know, we're working for Greenpeace, and we're saving the whales, but we're not getting along with mom and dad. <laughs> we're not writing our book. We're not making our movie, right? Millions of friends told us in the film world, oh, it's going to take two years, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do that. I created all kinds of people to throw roadblocks up. But in the end, I just kept pushing forward. This thing, I call it V. V kept saying to me, you better do what the hell I tell you to do. Or else this is your other choice. And you know that didn't work so well for you. So consider this. Just keep doing what I tell you. So I listened to what I called me, and it pushed me through, and it pushed me through. And boom, we put the movie out. And then we had this crazy idea from the beginning. Because, you know, there's a way you write a book, right? In the old days, you're all looking for a publisher. In the United States last year, self-published books outsold traditional published books for the first time ever. Everything's moving to self-publishing. So are you willing to change this movie? If anyone's ever seen it, they probably haven't seen this cover. Because Leap was a continuously evolving movie. So people said, well, you're done with that, and now you're done with that. We said, now we're going to update it. We're going to treat it like a software program and update it periodically. And now we've done this final version with Jeff Hoppy in it, and Ken Wapnick that edited A Course in Miracles, and a bunch of other people. There never is a way you have to do things. You can do them any way you want. Is that my time open? No. no. <laughs> and, and that piggybacks what Wolfing is inspiring. I love what you say. Thank you. And it piggybacks what Wolfing was saying that there is no one path. 38,000 versions of Christianity. I think Christianity is a great model if it works for you. I mean, if it works for you, it's great. I didn't grow up with it. I don't really know much about it overall. But if it serves you in your life, that's great. But what is your path? And again, if you think it's to meditate, maybe it is, but maybe it's to write that book. You know, maybe it's to start that business, like Jeff's been talking about. Sometimes spirituality looks like starting a tire manufacturing company. It may seem insane, but it does. Sometimes inspiration, enlightenment, awakening looks like leaving the relationship you're in and going to another one. But sometimes spirit tells you to do crazy things. Switch your job, switch your relationship, do this, do that. You know, and you have to figure out through your own process, is it true? Does it really work for you? But the bottom line is, getting into action sometimes, which sort of contradicts the fact that there really is nothing to do to wake up, because you already are awake. You're just pretending to be that, or to be that, or to be that. It's not what you really are. You're just pretending to be that. Who you really are is this. And what's going to get you there? What's going to cause you to find your model? What's going to cause you to get into action when you're inspired? Sometimes all I want to do is space out and go camping for a couple days with my girlfriend or with my girls or whatever it is I want to do. Sometimes I'm in heavy action. 
We're about to release a movie about empowered women, which has a spiritual component, but yet it takes us totally away from our consciousness world, which is really what we're in. And it just looks at women in business. Because I was inspired to do it. Why did Ike Allen do a movie about empowered women? I can tell you it's because I have two young daughters, two years old and five years old, and they're the cutest girls in the world, way cuter than any of you or any of your kids. <laughs> it's not true, but it is to me. I can tell you all kinds of things. I can tell you it's because I think that in history, women have got a bad rub, and that we need to create a world where men and women are balanced. I can tell you all kinds of stuff. And it's true, but really... When spirit, or V, or inspiration, or intuition, or passion, or the zero point field, or the universe, or the wind blowing through my hair, <laughs> as I play with my tomato plants in my very, very small garden that's probably dead right now back in the U.S., when spirit tells me, make a mo movie about empowered women, I do it. When spirit tells me, don't plan anything and get up there and I'll take care of you when you're up on stage. And I'm not doing too bad. I do it. When Spirit tells me, take a right to go home and take the long way around the lake. But it's only a minute. I'm left. If I go left, it's only a minute to get home. If I go right, it's like five minutes. And I have important shit to do. <laughs> if Spirit tells me to take a right, you know... You lose your gold card, you lose everything. Eventually, it's much easier to go this angle. This is much easier. So I'm going to wrap it up. If spirit is telling you to write a book, to change your relationship, to plant a garden, to get married, to not get married, to do whatever, to make a movie, right? Someone talked to me about a movie this morning, about doing a Katumi movie, and now we're going to talk about it. If Spirit tells you to do something, and you want to keep pursuing enlightenment, which is the cosmic joke, because you're already enlightened, you're just pretending to be these things. <laughs> the quickest way to get there is to do what this thing tells you, by whatever name. Ultimately, there's no name for it. That's why I call it V. It's more like Buddhism, the void. When Spirit tells you to do something, make your life easy, and do it. <laughs>